Let's go ahead and open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 6. This is spiritual warfare, the armor part 3. The armor part 3. I'll go ahead and just read a few verses, and then after this we'll be in the book of Acts for the remainder of the time. Acts chapter 6. We're going to start in verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Most of the Father, we love you. We just thank you for the reading of your word. God, empty my mind out. Fill me with your Holy Spirit now. Help me to feed your sheep today. And let us get across the message that you want about how we can uh, have our feet shod with the gospel of peace and how uh, we take that gospel everywhere we go. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Who, who, who was my early amen? Who was that? I'm going to get you. You'll see. I'm going to get you, boy. You know, I think about this uh, verse here. And, uh, when I was studying it today, and, and she's listening to me, stop listening to me. And uh, I was thinking about this today, and uh, with the armor that we've gone through, we talked about the belt of truth and how the belt of truth reveals. And then the breastplate of righteousness sanctifies or seals us. You know, this is how our salvation works. Isn't it interesting that Paul is putting all this in here and he's giving us the steps of our salvation? And that. Upon salvation, we, we understand who we are. We're sinners and that we can't get to heaven. And then that we are sealed by the blood of Jesus Christ and that sin doesn't have to conquer us anymore, but Jesus conquered sin and death and, and sanctified us, covers us with his blood, and our sins and past is no more. But then we look at the, the gospel of peace. We, we put on the shoes and we have to shot our feet. That means to bind and to tie tight. And we have to be ready with that, the preparation of the gospel of peace. You know, I think about shoes. I have my nice shoes on right now. I have my brown shoes. And by the way, I hate shoe shopping. My mother will do it for me about Christmas is when I get new shoes. All right? My Christmas shoes. Okay? Because I have a size 14 wide foot, and I can't find anything that's going to fit. Sometimes I wish I could just go barefoot. And you know what? I can't go barefoot. When I was a kid, I would go barefoot sometimes. And I remember we had our gravel driveway at home. And I could actually walk on the gravel. And it really wasn't that bad. I, I got used to walking on the gravel. I kind of had to be careful, but I could start going a little faster, and I'd walk outside without shoes on. Uh, and I remember my mom told this story, too, but isn't this true? We often go barefoot everywhere we go. Until one day, what happens when you go barefoot? You step on a beat. And man, that hurts. That hurts, and they get angry, and they sting your foot, and that is a sensitive spot. And after that, I pretty much don't go barefoot anymore. If I go barefoot now, it, even just on concrete, I'm kind of walking you know, gently because the feet or, or the, the shoes, they, they protect your feet. Now, what's interesting is there's different types of shoes for everything, isn't it? I mean, back in the day, it used to be just kind of one type of shoe, right? Uh, Dad, back in your day, how many different types of shoes did they have when you were growing up? Quite a bit. Did they have quite a bit still? No. Usually I just see like the black shoes that were nice and they wore those to run around playing and they had a nicer black pair of shoes for you know going to, to church in. I mean it was weird. If you look back in like the old old movies that you watch, and I like watching those, it was just like just one pair of shoes. Mm -hmm. Right? They didn't have gym shoes up until uh, I don't know when that was, Dad. You know, he, he used to sell shoes and worked at a shoe place because he was he's really adamant about having the right type of shoes on. At Christmas, when we put them on, we're walking around, he goes, how, how do they feel? And he goes, get over here. Put all your weight on the right side, all your weight on the left side. And he grabs our foot, making sure that there's enough room, and he still takes care of us because when you have the wrong shoes on, it causes issues. If you don't have the right shoe on, your feet can start to hurt. When your feet start to hurt, it can cause back issues and knee issues. When that starts to happen, uh, it makes it more difficult to do certain jobs. I work at Kroger. I worked grocery the other night. I was down low on the ground. I can tell you, I was sore. 
I was hurting the next day because I got down into the areas that I had to almost lay on my belly at times to reach back on these shelves that are on the bottom shelf. I'm a big, tall guy. And when you can't uh, perform your ability at your job, what happens? You end up not looking good to your boss. You could possibly lose your job. And then there's that ramification. If you lose your job, you lose your income. If you lose your income, you could lose your house. If you lose your house, you don't have a place to live. Uh, you could even lose your car because some people have uh, car payments and uh, they repo your car back. Uh, you don't have money for food. And then you pretty much die. All because <laughs> you didn't have the right pair of shoes. <laughs> So we're going to close with that. <laughs> Get the right shoes on, folks. All right? Mara's looking at me funny. She's just like, Bryce, just stop. <laughs> but shoes are important. But here, Paul's talking about a spiritual shoe. He's saying right here in, in, in verse uh, 15, he says, And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Can we just break some of these words down in this verse? The word shod means to bind under one's feet. Gospel, I mean, and we've heard you preach the gospel. Does anybody know what the gospel means? It means this. It means a good message. That's why it's the gospel of Jesus Christ. But just the word gospel and in in, in by itself, it just means a good message. So you have to bind under your foot the gospel, which is a good message, of peace. The word peace here, it, it, it means it, it's a piece of literal or figurative, by implication, prosperity. So we should have this good message bound to our feet, which brings in prosperity no matter where we go. Well, this is tough. This is hard to have, isn't it? I, if you go out into the world, even now with everything that's going on in the news, it's hard, it's hard to be positive. It's hard to think, I want to be prosperous in my Christian life when we just feel like the wind's taken out of our sail. I'm like, oh, man. Oh, what's going on? I was having a conversation with uh, Brother Eric this morning, and uh, my devotion that I read today, which is very challenging, it says, and it says in the Bible, and it was in uh, Timothy, that you need to be thankful. That's a, you need to be thankful for the kings and magistrates that are over you. That is a hard message right there, isn't it? <laughs> Be thankful. So I, I said, okay. So come January 21st, guess what? This guy is going to be thankful for the people that are over him, even the new president. And that can be hard. But you need to be thankful for who's over you. That even sounds dirty coming out of my mouth. Sorry, I might hit the level. Um, but this is hard to do in, in today's society because we can. Uh, we just need to think about what these shoes can bring. You see, the gospel of peace brings something to your life that you've never realized before. To see what it brings, let's turn to the book of Acts. I want to look at two men that had their feet shod with the gospel of peace. You see, when Paul wrote the book of Ephesians, he pinned these words down as he had already experienced so much pain, so much suffering, so much turmoil, and he knew what it meant to shod his feet with the gospel of peace. So go to Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. We're going to see what it looks like in the life of a believer, as a Christian that is born again, that has accepted Jesus Christ as his Savior, to shod your feet with the gospel of peace. Go to Acts. I'm just going to wait past it. Acts chapter 16. And we're going to start in verse 20, I had 25 on there. Let's start in verse uh, 20. Acts chapter 16, in verse 20. Actually, let's start in 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. And brought them to the magistrates, saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city. Now, Paul and Silas went into the city. There was a woman following them around for days that was possessed of a devil. And she was a soothsayer and made all these guys money. So they had her captive. She had a devil in her, and she could soothsay. She could tell the future. All right? She could know what was going to happen. Just, and gave all this stuff to these guys, and they used her. And this woman was following Paul and Silas around everywhere. 
And she was saying, hey, they're coming into the city. All these people are Jesus. And it even said at one point, Paul got green. He, he got fed up with this woman following him around. So he just turned and looked at her and, and cast the demon out of her. And now all of a sudden, these magistrates, these people that were making money off her, can no longer make money off this woman. She's, the, the devil's gone. She's clean. Paul casted that, that wicked thing out. And now these guys are like, man, we don't have a way to make money. We're angry at these guys for doing this. And that's where Paul and Silas are. And that's where they are brought to these uh, Pharisees and these religious rulers. And it says in 21, And teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither do observe being Romans. And the multitude rose up together against them, and the magistrates rent off their clothes. So they stripped them down naked and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. I want to look at this first point here of what the gospel of peace gives, because the gospel of peace gives us things. When we put the right shoes on and where we walk, even on the hard ground to walk on, we can still be protected. The gospel of peace gives three things I want to look at. The first one is it gives strength. And when we looked here in verse 24, it says, who having received such a charge, this is the jailer, thrust them into the inner prison. So that means the, 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 the innermost part of, of that jail. It would be hard to break out of there. He goes, I'm not losing track of these guys. It'd be like being in the center of Alcatraz, all right? And it says, uh, and made their feet fast in the stock. So he, he chained them up. So you got Paul and Silas that are uh, naked, chained up. They've been beaten. Can you imagine that? Has anybody here ever been beaten, chained up, and naked? I, I, I have not, okay? I have not been. That's never happened to me. And I pray that this never happens to you guys. But can I tell you this? This does happen to people all over the world that are missionaries going into foreign countries. They've been tortured. They've been beaten. They've been put in prison. They're naked, and they die. That happens today. We just don't see it. It doesn't get advertised. But it does happen. But I want to look at this. You see, it, the gospel of peace, it gave Paul and Silas a strength. You see, Paul and Silas were beaten, stripped down in the center of this prison. With stocks on, but they had the strength. If you look here in verse 25, they had the strength to pray. It says this, and at midnight, in verse 25, Paul and Silas prayed. When hard times come your way, what's the first thing you do? Should. But typically in people's lives, when hard times come, we complain. Oh, look what happened. Oh, I'm, yeah, in the life of a believer, I, I've heard many Christians, when you get around, uh, especially pastors, all right? But really, it's anybody. You get around a big group of people, and you start talking, and then it almost becomes a competition of whose life is worse. Have you ever had that? Who has a worse life? Who has the most heartache? Who has the most troubles? It becomes a competition. You just got to one-up it. It's like, man, it drains you. It drains me when I get around people like that. It's like, come on, guys. Is there anything good and positive going on in your life? Well, I don't know. Like, you're alive. Be grateful for being alive. Yeah, my life is full of misery. Well, yeah, probably because you have a terrible outlook. on You're not thinking, what can God do? You know, Vicky told me, she was driving to the hospital. She just was just breaking down. Just like, God, what are you doing? And he just let her know, hey, I'm still with you. And I'm in control. And even in that time of heartache, she even said on the way, she started praying. Church, when bad times happen, the gospel of peace will give you the strength to pray. It should be one of the first things that we do. Get on your knees and pray. Hey, during this election, did anybody get on their knees and actually pray? Or to just kind of casually pray about something. We've been so focused on seeing a miracle for Pastor Tim. And I've been praying diligently about it in my own personal life. We've been praying here as a, as a church family. And look what God did in this time. I feel like a short time when we've been diligently seeking God and praying for a miracle. God can answer anything. But you got to get down on your knees. you got to have the gospel peace to give you the strength to pray. But look at the 